Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Tester Tech. And today I want to look with you together at the Fedora i3 Spin. So in a previous video I was scrolling through the, the blog, the Fedora magazine, and I saw this article about Fedora i3 Spin. And I was immediately interested in trying it out and see how it goes. So, uh, just to summarize before we dive into the video, I think uh, it's working like any Fedora distribution works. So the installer is great. You can easily get it up and running. But then if you have it installed, then you are faced with a i3 default installation. And I think there is where the spin-off part of this video is about. So I want to customize it a little bit using some existing i3 customization I had already done. So I want to bring it a little bit further for you to experience it like, yeah, like a better out-of-the-box experience from i3. But I fully understand why they do it like this. I, I, they just give the the base system and you can customize it the way you want. That's good, but it takes a lot of time to get it up. Uh, yeah, at least get it a little bit user friendly. And that's well, where I help you with this video. So without further ado, let's dig into the video. Like I said in the introduction, I want to look at the Fedora i3 spin. So spins are variants of Fedora. If you look at spins.fedoraproject.org, See a couple of spins already here. So the KDE Plasma XFCE LXQT Mate Compass Cinnamon. So our variants of Fedora, uh, but using a different desktop. And i3, like I said, the i3 tiling window manager. We're gonna look at that one. So I was in fact running a couple of months I was running uh, Arch Linux and i3. It was a really great experience to be honest. I really loved i3 and the way you could customize it and uh, the way it makes use of your keyboard in the most optimal way. And the Fedora i3 spin was indeed very interesting. So I thought well why not look at, uh, at it on Fedora and show you if you spin it up what it looks like, but not leave it there. I want to show you because it takes a lot of time to get a really nice experience in i3. I don't want to give you everything because one of the virtues is in setting it up and tinkering with it yourself. But I want to speed it up for you so you can use like an out of the box start using this Fedora i3 spin and give you a, a start starting experience uh, based on this video. and. Also, of course, a GitHub repository. If you have downloaded that ISO, let's uh, do it real quick and uh, show you. Um, downloads. And then i3 live and Fedora, I think, base next. So the defaults should be okay. Started in live mode first time. And once that's done booting, then yeah, basically this is not very interesting the first time because it's a live distribution, but you do need to make a couple of choices. In my case, I have my window set as the mod key. And this is like the out of the box experience. And if you hit mod, my, in my case, like I said, uh, mod key is Windows. If you hit Windows Enter, it will open up a uh, RXVT terminal. So it's called your XVT because the U is Unicode. Uh, if you just hit live install, then it will take you to the installer and it will pop up any moment now. Let me. So if you have your mouse in your hand, you can hear, you see the focus. You see it shifting now, it's in the installer, now it's in the terminal. Okay, and if you want to resize this window, if you hit Windows R, you can do resize. And I just hit the arrow keys to resize that window. And hit enter to confirm the resize action. So English. 
just doing a default default quick quick install root uh, lock root account give it a super simple so it's not advised to use such a small password for oops make this user an admin okay it says too short so click two times begin installation so after a little while it's what should say uh, it's complete and uh, if you hit the button finish installation you could hit reboot pseudo reboot if all goes well it should give you like this login page and uh, the user you created is here can just hit enter so now you're booted into your fresh i3 installation congratulations so this is the out of the box experience of that spin so uh choice you need to make in my case is home demo dot uh, config i3 slash config you could choose yes generate that config or no i will use the defaults Let's do enter for now to generate a config and then you can choose between Windows key or Alt key being the modifier. My preference is to use the Windows key. And as you can see, the wallpaper is the same as Fedora 33. And here you see the one that is your, your desktop or your workspace. Can if you hit a modifier, in my case is Windows key and a, a number, you can switch so we can uh, switch between those if you had the modifier and enter you will open up a terminal so this is uh, a one if we hit a modifier and two for example and you can do two you can easily now switch between one and two so to be honest this is not a great out-of-the-box experience at least in terms of uh, user friendliness at, at least that's my opinion and if you start diving into uh, i3 window manager you start customizing and discovering there's a whole lot of stuff to discover i already did a little bit of digging and investigating uh, and i tweaked it a little bit so i will show you the end so it will go from this to this in the end. So I think it's a big improvement, but let's do it step by step again. And I'll show you how to get this customized, but I will not do too much because I think, yeah, like, one, like I said, one of the cool things is that you discover for yourself how you want to customize it. Let's install Git and install Vim, Python 3, and the open as uh, open ssh server that's also recommended so like this is like the default packages okay hit the password and uh, wait a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds depending on the speed of your computer enable sshd and i'll also start it Let's connect to that host. Uh, so it's nothing, nothing in the home directory. Uh, bash RC is there. Some config. Let's look at the tester tech dot files. So of course I'll have the link to this in the description below. If the dot files repository, it will say some. Uh, about what kind of applications you have configuration for uh, and how to use it but i will show it uh, straight away uh, first make the dir git cd into there and clone this repository cd into the directory and run the script make simlinks 
.sh. The bash rc, the default one, I will remove it. There's nothing in there anyway. And the default i3 config, I will also remove that. So I'm actually missing these executables. Let's quickly install them. So I'm missing the Rofi, Compton, Polybar, XRender, XRDB. I'm missing all these files at this moment, all these programs. Okay, that's done. If you hit uh, uh, Mod Shift E to exit, you can do exit. Let's open up this terminal again, or at least this i3, and then you see a big change there. So you now have the nicely styled using Compton. Okay, and this is also interesting, this terminal. So you can easily open tabs now. More user friendly this way, and you can easily switch, stuff like that. Cool. So what I did do, and I want to show you that in this video as well. Let's open up the notes. And that's the polybar themes. Copy. Git clone this polybar themes. Let's go into there. And run the setup. H. So you can choose a style. Let's choose the bitmap because I showed, so, uh, showed you that screenshot earlier of the bitmap variant. And now it's already installed. That's cool. And if you were to, um, let's go to that repository. Polybar themes. So you see a lots of themes the the this repository has. System tray icons make it makes it very much more user friendly. So Rofi, that's the app launcher. So Rofi is the thing that if you hit Windows D, you have this pop up. So that's uh, Rofi. So some fonts, the installation, git clone, and then run the setup, and then the setup is done, and that's it. And this one, uh, you can call it, let's, let's call it, so config polybar launch, uh, let's bash. Config polybar launch. It will say, well, available themes, blocks, for example. Blocks. And you see here above, it will show the, the, the yeah, like the, the menu. So it's cool, very user friendly. Okay, you can even choose styles if you want. So, for example, Nord. Matches maybe a little bit better. And so this command is uh, is okay. Let's add that to the polybar start script we created already. Let's uh, first kill. Go into here. This, let's add that to the polybar start vim into scripts uh, polybar start. Paste it in there and add the ampersand behind it. Exit there and let's uh, exit i3. Log in again, and then you will have Polybar started here. And if you hit uh, Windows key Enter, you have that uh, nice terminal open now. And yeah, you can just start using i3 the way you want. 
And uh, yeah, I think uh, just to summarize, I showed you the out of the box installation and I showed you as well how to easily enhance it using a quick start and I call it a, a tester tech spin-off. Just using a couple of uh, commands and uh, I will have of course that all in the description below. I show you how to get started and uh, yeah, for myself I think uh, maybe I will install i3 on my main machine and uh, give it another go because now it's uh, running on Fedora and uh, it's very cool and uh, yeah, I really uh, like using it. That's it for this video guys. I hope you liked it and maybe learned something new. So please, if you haven't subscribed already, please don't forget to subscribe and a thumb up will be greatly appreciated. And see you in the next one. Bye bye.